Isang mapagpalang araw po. Kumusta po mga kamatini? Welcome to our new episode. This is quarter 4, week number 6. And today's episode, we will continue the next part of our topic last week. Solving problems and drawing inferences based on data presented in a line graph. But before that, I will present first the answer key from the previous episode natin, quarter 4 week number 5. Please check now your answers. Here is the answer key for quarter 4 week number 5 ng ating math try nga. Number 1, the answer is letter C. Number 2 is letter B. Number 3 is also letter B. Number 4, the answer is letter D. And number 5, The answer is letter C. Congratulations to those who got a perfect score. Kaya naman, abangan natin mamaya kung sino ang ating top 5 na sobrang bibilis na sumagot at nakakuha ng kanilang perfect score. At sila ang ating Mothinix of the Week. Kung gusto nyo rin maging Mothinix of the Week, Sagutin nyo lamang ang ating math try nga. Pero syempre, dapat tumutok muna para makuha nyo at maintindihan nyo ang topic natin for this week. Kaya't makinig, manood, not matuto kay Maestro Olaso. Oops! Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell para updated kayo sa mga bago kong video. Like, share, and don't skip! The ads! <laughs> Para laging happy tayo mga kamatinik. Simulan na natin ang ating aralin. In this lesson, you will learn to solve some problems and draw inferences based on data presented in line graph. We will start with our first topic, solving problems using data presented in a line graph. Again, you can go back to the steps how we solve the problem by following the four main steps. Understand, plan, solve, and check and look back. Also, there are phrases or words that gives us the idea to what operation to be used in order to solve the problem easily, especially in this topic. Let's try this example. This data is up to date since malapit na matapos ang ating school year and part of it is the computation of your grades and of course, your final grade. Let's have the questions to solve in this graph. In what quarter did Ella get the lowest grade? What about The highest grade. What is the difference between the highest and lowest grade? So, to solve some questions, we just simply go back to the graph, ayan, and look what quarter has the lowest grade and the highest grade. All right. Then, from the word difference, Yan makikita natin. Ano ba yung gagamitin natin? What operations pertains to the word difference? Yes, we will just subtract the highest in the fourth quarter and the lowest in the second quarter. So, what do you think? And we have now the answer. Ella got the lowest grade in the second quarter while she got the highest grade in the fourth quarter. There is a difference of 4 between the highest and the lowest grade. Bakit 4? She got an 85 grade on the fourth quarter while 81 in the second quarter. So 85 minus 81, it's equal to 4. Okay? Now, we have the next question. 
Ito, may kinalaman pa rin kay Ella's grade in math. What do you think is the average of Ella's grade in math? So, this is very interesting. Did you still remember how we compute the average? Well, if you forgot it, watch and learn. This is also the process if you want to check your final grade. Diba? Malapit nang matapos ang ating school year. So, to compute the average, let's follow the step by step. Here is the formula or the, the sentence or the equation. We'll just first add all the grades. 83 plus 81 plus 84 plus 85, then divide it by 4. So let's get first the sum of the four grades of Ella. We have 83 plus 81 plus 84 plus 85. So 3 plus 1 plus 4. We have 8 plus 5, 13. Bring down 3. Carry 1. So 8 times 4. 32 plus the carry 1. So we have 33. The answer or the sum is 333. Divide it by 4. So we divide it by 4. So we have yeah, 33 divided by 4. We have 8 times 4, 32, a remainder of 1, bring down 3, we have 13 divided by 4, 3, we have 12, then remainder of 1, then continue by putting first the decimal point, yan, then add 0, so we have 10 divided by 4, we have 2 times 4, we have 8, remainder of 2, another 0, we have 20 divided by 4, so we have 5, so there is no remainder na. So we have the final answer, the average of Ella's grade is 83 and 25 hundredths or 83.25. So that's how we compute the average. Now, the last question is a sub-reflection checkup related to the graph presented. Yan? Ano kaya ang ating mahiwagang tanong? My question now is, what will you do in order to get good grades? Well, alam na alam nyo na ang sagot. As a student, reflect, no? Ano ba yung mga ginawa mo? Bakit ka nakakakuha ng good grades? Okay? Now, I will give you my limath tips so that you will get good grades. So, ito ay akin lamang. This is my advice. Hopefully, you will apply these tips if you are aiming for excellence. <laughs> okay. So, ito ang aking limath tips para sa inyo. First one. Focus more on your good study habits. Siyempre, we have uh, our different study habits. No? So, you have to focus alin doon sa mga study habits ang effective at nakakatulong. Second, do your best and complete all your requirements on time. So, submit in complete of course, all the requirements needed kapag kayo ay magpapasa ng mga project, performance tasks, written outputs, o kung ano-ano pang mga requirements na hinihingi ni teacher. Pero hindi lang yun dapat. Dapat, uh, yung output na ginawa mo should be at your own best. no? Yung ginawa mo, pinag-effort, ano, hindi yung minadali. Kasi nga, hinahabol mo yung deadline. Dapat hindi ganun. Habang matagal pa ang deadline, dapat ginagawa nyo na at uh, syempre, you do your best in uh, submitting your outputs. Third one, pay attention in class discussion. This is very important. No, In order you to understand the lesson, you have to pay attention, makinig ng mabuti. And number four, discover new learning strategies. Okay, sometimes our uh, learning strategy is not already effective, so you have to think a new ways on how to learn efficiently and effectively. And number five, spare time to relax and do healthy lifestyle. It's very important. No, no you have to uh, find time in uh, relaxing. Watch TV, play your gadget, but again, you have 
to do it after all the tasks you have done. Siyempre, para wala ka ng problema, then you have to exercise din, paminsan-minsan, then eat a balanced diet. Siyempre, yung mga healthy uh, food natin. And of course, most important is you have to sleep 8 to 10 hours. Enough sleep na yon. Okay, so these are some tips in order you to have a good grade. So, now we will proceed to the next part of the topic. This time, let's discuss on drawing inferences based on data presented in a line graph. When we say inference, ayan, it is the process of giving conclusions or hypotheses based on the data presented. With regard to line graphs, we will be able to draw conclusions from them by merely, of course, analyzing the data presented. Napaka-importante, laging babalikan mo lang yung data presented in the line graph para makakuha ka ng magandang inferences at conclusions. So, that's it. Parang ano lang to, reliable information lang yan. We need to to have a true and our facts are based from the reliable information and evidences we gathered. So now, in order to have a good and correct inferences, we need to analyze and understand the data itself. Okay? So, in making or drawing inferences or conclusion, we may use the following expressions. So, ito yung mga katulong sa inyo kung ano ang inyong gagamitin kapag kayo ay nagdo-draw or nagmi-make ng conclusions. Okay? First, from the information given, I conclude that, 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 and so on. Or, you just change, I infer that. Or, I assume that. Also, from the information given, it can be decided that, 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 and so on. Or change it to, it can be concluded that, 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 that. Or it can be inferred that, 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 that. Or it can be assumed that, 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 and so on. Also, we can use this expression. The information in the text or in figure that, that, that implies that that, 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 and so on. Or you can change suggests that, and so on. Or you can use hints that. Ayan. So these are the expression na makakatulong in drawing inferences or making conclusions. So let's have these examples. Ayan. So we have now the data. So look at carefully Analyze carefully the data presented in the line graph. So, here is the guide question. From the given information, what can you say about taking care of pigs? O, tingnan nyo ha. Yung red natin, yan yung pigs. While yung blue natin, yun yung chicken. So, those are the animals in a farm. So, ano ba ang inyong kasagutan? Yes, if your answer is like this, from the information given, since the farm has more pigs, it can be concluded that it is easier to take care of pigs than chickens. If this is your answer, you are correct. Diba? Kasi mas marami yung uh, inaalaga ang pigs kaysa sa chickens. So, it might be uh, one of the conclusions or inferences na pwede nating magawa based on the data. Okay? Let's have the next example. Now, look at the data again of LS grade in math. So, here is the guide question. From the given information, what can you say about LS grade in math? What do you think? Well, if you have this answer, from the information, it can be assumed that Ella had difficulty with the lesson in the second quarter. Well, you are correct. 
kapag ito ang iyong sinagot. Very evident, bumaba siya ng second quarter. So, ano ba ang pwede nating gawing conclusion? Nahirapan siya siguro sa second quarter lessons. Okay? And we have the last example. Look at now the data. Here is the guide question. Is the business profiting? Kumikita ba? Why? What do you think? Well, if this is your answer, yes, from the information, it can be inferred that it shows an increasing number of cookies sold, which means an increasing profit. Ayan, siyempre pataas yung iyong kita, siyempre tumataas din ang iyong profit. Okay? Ano ba yung profit yung kita mo sa business? Alright? So, I think we are done with our topic for quarter four week number six. I hope you learned something from me. This time, to test if you really learned in our lesson for this week, get ready and say... Math Triangle! Calling of you, grade 5 learners, please type or comment your answers in the comment section of this episode. Just type your complete name, the name and location of your school, and your answer. I have only 5 items to answer. You can pause the question if you want to read and understand it over and over again. Are you ready? Let's do Matry Nga! Alright, number one. What was the sale for the first three consecutive months? Is it A, 20,000 pesos? B, 45,000 pesos? C, 70,000 pesos? D, 80,000 pesos? Number two. How much more was Mr. Sanchez's sales in March than in February? Is it A, 5,000 pesos? Is it B, 10,000 pesos? C, 15,000 pesos? D, 20,000 pesos? Number three, what was his total sale from January to June? Is it A, 140,000 pesos? B, 145,000 pesos? C, 150,000 pesos. D, 155,000 pesos. Number four. The graph below shows the income of a coffee shop from January to May. The owner is thinking if he will continue or not. Based on the graph, do you think it's profitable to continue or not? Why? Letter A. Yes, because the graph shows an increase in sales. B. Yes, because it has a lot of income. C. No, because the income is getting low. D. No, because there is no income from the very start. Number 5. The graph below shows the sales of a newspaper store. It shows the number of newspapers and magazines sold in one week. Which do you think is more profitable to sell? Newspaper or magazine? What does it mean? A. The store was able to sell more newspaper than magazine. That means the owner can gain more profit from selling newspapers. Letter B. The store was able to sell more magazine than newspaper. That means the owner can gain more profit from selling magazines. C. The store was able to sell equal numbers of newspaper and magazines. That means the owner can gain more profit from selling both newspapers and magazines. And letter D. 
the store was able to sell both the newspaper and magazine. That means the owner gains profit from them. Alright, so I think eh, you have now your answers. Kindly comment it now and abangan baka kayo ang ating maging Mathinic of the Week sa susunod nating episode. And before we finally end, I would like to present to you our Mathinics of the Week! Ang ating kauna-unahang nakakuha ng perfect score ay walang iba from siyempre ang aming itinagmamalaki from Rizal Elementary School of Five Eagle, Vitor C. Arcega! Our second pangalawas sa pinakamabilis, of course, ang kapitbahay from Pembo Elementary School, Prince William C. Perez! Ang ating third Matinic of the Week ay nagmula naman sa Pasong Kawayan, the second of West Elementary School. Congratulations to Cyril May and Magamay! Our fourth Matinic of the Week ay nagmula naman, eto pa, isang suki natin from Hulu Integrated School of Mandaluyong City, Neil Danger D. Bernal. And our last Mothering of the Week ay siyempre isa pa sa mga suki natin from Maharlika Integrated School, Tagig City. Congratulations, Andrew Emmanuel Vega. Alright, thank you again to all of you and congratulations din sa iba pang mga naka-perfect ng ating mother nga. Again, keep up your good attitude. Remember that the best way to learn is to apply what you have learned. And if you get a mistake, do not worry. That is another way of learning. Again, shout out po sa inyong lahat na sumusuport at nag-aabang ng ating mga episode. Thank you very much po mga kaguro, mga magulang at mga mag-aaral mula Luzon hanggang sa Mindanao. God bless po. And that concludes our episode for the fourth quarter week number six. Again, maraming maraming salamat See you in the next episode. Happy learning!